Hello and welcome to 26th lecture of course on data enabled tribological engineering from experiments to predictive model. Topic of this lecture is data driven models for friction prediction. We have learned a number of things uh, in previous 9 lecture and our main focus was uh, on how data enabled engineering can be utilized in tribology in my view. There will be a big change in tribology when data driven techniques and methods are fully integrated into engineering. A big plus in the area of tribology utilizing this approach will be to predict the wear patterns and friction properties at relatively low cost. Analyzing huge amount of data about the lubricant performance can help engineers improve the way they lubricate tribal surfaces by cutting down on the energy losses that caused by the friction and mechanical system ca which can be optimized to a longer life and provide a more reliable performance. We can also add by monitoring and analyzing the data because that will help us in a predictive maintenance. So, being able to spot the potential failure before they get worse, we can fix them quickly. We could cut the cost and prevent expensive equipment failure. In my view, tribology moving towards the data centric method will help to make the decision much better manner without relying too much on trial and error methods. This more accurate way of solving problem helps better utilization of resources and speed up the rate at which new ideas are brought to the market. So, it is overall moving towards the sustainability which is the current demand of the society. Whatever I said I want to just give a brief of that we say benefit of the data enabled engineering which we have been covering in last 9 lecture. You say we are trying to integrate the data driven approaches and methodologies so that we can take a better decision, we can go for the innovation, we can optimize things. And this kind of data centric approaches will provide a better and better method to analyze the friction. Otherwise, we have been thinking the friction is kind of heuristic, it gives values and we need to just believe it. It can really improve the wear performance, lubrication performance, not only we can get a some sort of idea on how to design a surface, so that we get a more efficient durable system. Indirectly, we are going to increase accuracy of analysis of tribological behavior. We will be able to predict wear pattern more better manner and the present lecture topic is on a frictional characteristics. We may explore little bit more about the ANN which we have covered in last lecture. We need to also cover regression trees, we need to also cover the support vector machine. And one more interesting thing comes in these days is a Gaussian process regression. Reason being it is based on a normal distribution and probability distribution. And we have been discussing all this in uh, we say the statistical analysis. Utilizing all this approach we can really provide a better approach towards the predictive maintenance. And then we will be able to provide a better and better informed decision when to really replace equipment and then how much inventory need to be capped. So, it will really overall provide a cost effective and efficient problem solving method. As I mentioned the present lecture is more focused on a coefficient of friction, friction force and friction torque. There are some method to uh, find out the coefficient of friction, there are some load cells which will be able to provide the friction forces and there are torque sensors which will be able to provide a frictional uh, torque values. The question comes are we able to model all those? We find a lot of difficulties. Are we able to predict? Yes, if we have a data and we have utilized a machine learning algorithm, so we will be able to develop a good uh, robust model and that can predict the results also. So, that is what we are trying to aim in a present course. So, let us let me start with a one case study. Uh, this paper was published in 2023 in Tribology International. And then uh, it is related to our lecture which we have covered then uh, as a lecture 11 elastro hydrodynamic lubrication. This uh, paper is related to the cam follower mechanism. 
we know very well the CAM failover mechanism is subjected to elastohydrodynamic lubrication and then there will be extensive force lubrication thickening lubrication thinning so there are many many parameters in that now this author have predicted theoretically some sort of friction force and they have measured also experimentally and they found that there is a some sort of variation you can see here the variation may be say in this like something like a 55 and what they are predicting something like 80 85 so there is a huge variation in that not only this you can find out the variation also here you can find a variation also here and this is a cam angle rotation of the cam from 0 degree to 360 degree we know very well the cam mechanisms are very popular to convert a rotary motion into linear motion it is required in many machineries and overall topological performance will depend more on a contact geometry what kind of cam we are using of course oil viscosity and viscosity thickening and thinning effect also as well as it will depend on operating parameters like a speed and load so these author they have used a different algorithm they have used ANN they have used a SVM they have used a Gaussian process regression method also to simulate friction coefficient and friction force there are two variables we know in they are using word coefficient of friction and friction force and as per their paper they mention that if you want to estimate the friction force ANN is a good tool if you want to measure the friction coefficient then GPR is a better one question comes why question of friction and friction force are directly related to each other then why there is a variation and why one method is giving a better result for the friction force other method is giving a better result for the friction coefficient so there is a need to really understand that we say that's why we require estimation of the friction coefficient and the friction force and then as a function of the rotation and subjected to different kind of a speed and load to initiate one more thing they have already mentioned in this paper that cam follower roughness um, before experiment was something they may measured RA value as a 0.38 even though this RA value does not have any meaning for the topological purpose but when we want to really see whether wear out is happening or is smoothing action is happening then this kind of value will be used for them. and then they also mentioned the cam uh, RA value after experiment will turn out to be 0.22 micron coming to the follower roughness they mentioned that before experiment it was a 0.1 micron actually the follower is much better in a roughness compared to the cam reason being the cam shape is difficult and then doing that kind of super finish operation on cam will always be more difficult finally after experiment they are getting RA value as a 0 0.07 micron so it makes sense to us also now question comes how do we go ahead so they have provided uh, results and then uh, they also have uh, understood that the friction force which they have predicted using the theoretical model that is why here red color line shows the theoretical model it is giving uh, worse results or maybe say somewhat higher result reason being the Barrow's equation which we have learned in the lecture 7 that they are using the Barrow's relation and an exponential uh, law they are utilizing which we understood in the lecture 7 if the Barrow's relation is used for the uh, lesser than 100 megapascal it will give a reasonable good results but Rowland's relation will give better results if the overall operating pressure or the contact pressure is more than 100 megapascal so naturally shifting from this relation to this relation naturally complexity level will increase significantly the question comes how often we should go ahead with the more and more complex relations if we have a good computational sources we can go ahead but if we have a good computational sources then why not we adopt that machine learning approach and we get directly quick results so what they have done in this case they to estimate the friction force they have used a relative velocity u1 minus u2 will provide a relative velocity and there is a simple uh, Newton relation they have used for the viscosity which in my view mostly the oils are non Newtonian they should not be utilized and uh, Newtonian relation should not be utilized and this is a Borus relation they have utilized in addition they use a Hertzian equation the question comes Hertzian equation has inherent assumption of the smooth surface they do not account the surface roughness 
So, when we are utilizing this relation inherently we are assuming surface roughness is almost 0 or negligible. Now, when we substitute it the friction force will come something like this that is 1. Now, here somewhat we are neglecting surface softness and we are going ahead with a Barrow's relation which will be uh, invalid if pressure turn out to be more than 100 mega Pascal. Now, I also realize that they, they have not accounted what we call a lubricant shear thinning effect. We know very well that when the lubricant thickness turn out to be some micron level and rotational speed is a reasonable lubricant shear thinning will occur definitely. So, if you have an interest you can see uh, my publication in 2001 which I try to analyze utilize for the engine general bearing to utilize, see the which oil will give better results because we need to look at which lubricant has a lesser shear thinning effect compared to the other oil. So, that is what is important and now how do we account the shear thinning effect the in my research publication the relation has been given in this form that effective mu effective viscosity is a initial viscosity plus at higher shear rate what will be the viscosity. So, this is the same thing here in this case Barrow's relation we use a eta on a 0 and then here we are in another value is equal to mu 1 and you can see here shear thinning behavior viscosity is decreasing and finally, it gets saturated and that is what we call eta infinity or in my relation what I have given that time it was written as a mu 2. It is a function of the shear rate and shear rate really will go in cam follower and higher side particularly the speed is very high and then uh, maybe high in this is 600 rpms, 800 rpm and the thickness is almost negligible it is a some micron level. So, we can utilize this kind of relation for this purpose to estimate the friction force in a better manner. Question comes even though if I account all this will I be getting better results there will be spots of the high temperature and cam follower mechanisms that time you need to account a thermal thinning effect also. So, there is a thermal thinning, there is a shear thinning, there is a viscous thickening, there are so many effects with only one viscosity parameter. On top of that we have a roughness feature, how do we account so many factors in that and then just to avoid that that is why they are, we are using the machine learning algorithms. So, this authors uh, used some input parameters in my previous lecture also have shown that uh, there are number of input parameter output parameters they consider output parameter either friction force or friction coefficient. Input parameters so the, uh, uh, it has been calculated based on the cam you can see here that the cam as the rotation increases the follower uh, is experiencing some sort of force because here the we are giving only friction force, but in next slide I will show the normal force also that normal force will continuously vary. That means, we are not changing it is because of the operation because of the rotation operating force is changing and that we need to really drive from a relation we need to estimate it. Coming to the preload which is a spring force because we know very well cam follower mechanism they should not get disjoint and we really give some sort of preload force on that and it may be more details can be uh, you can get from a publication which I have referred in this case. So, they are giving a preload 212 Newton, 312 Newton, 412 Newton, 512 Newton, 612 Newton coming to the cam angle is varying from a 0 to 360 degree coming to the cam rotational speed they have used a 400 rpm, 600 rpm, 800 rpm to see the performance of the different different rpm where the coefficient of friction is increasing decreasing what is really happening in the situation. So, they have shown um, the experimental results as well as a uh, theoretical uh, results in this case results which have been estimated using ANN. So, here the friction force ANN they have utilized ANN similarly friction force ANN friction force ANN friction force ANN. Now, here they have used a preload 212 and operating speed is a 600 rpm here preload has been increased to 612 from 212 to 612 what is the reason that is we need to in, in investigate that coming to here we say preload is a 312 and then they are maintaining the same preload, but they are increasing speed from 400 to 800 rpm just double of that. The question comes why we are increasing preload there is a reason you can see here the mechanism 
somewhat a fluctuation in a coefficient of friction as a friction force is coming here. So, we are able to observe the variation in the friction force as it is moving more than 150 crank degree and here also we are able to see peaks and valleys, it is not that it is a smooth surface. Coming to the higher uh, load, we are able to see somewhere peaks, but more or less the, the later part may be say 150 degree to 360 degree. So, in this case is a degree, so I have used a degree, right? it has been uh, smoothened. Then coming to here, uh, you, you will find a lesser uh, the variation. Coming to the higher uh, the preload and higher RPM, we are able to see much more smooth behavior. And that is what we say as RPM is increasing or as a preload is increasing, variation in coefficient of friction or variation in a friction force is decreasing. So, that is the advantage of a cam follower mechanism or in fact any rotating uh, system whenever the speed increases or uh, we say the preload increases, there will be lesser variation in a friction force except that this domain now where the contact pressure is going to be significantly higher. So, you can see this kind of uh, behavior in almost all uh, loads and speed condition, this is uh, what we need to figure out. Now, coming to the coefficient of friction which they have also utilized uh, ANN for that, you can see here coefficient of friction is very significantly at the 212 preload and 600 rpm. While when they are increasing preload from 212 to 612, they do not see much variation or maybe the fluctuation what we are able to see here that is uh, getting removed and value is also coming more or less similar manner, it is not varying significantly. Coming to the 400 rpm and a slightly higher preload, we are finding that yes, results are also more or less similar manner. While coming to the high rpm, 800 rpm, again we are able to see some sort of variation, but whatever the measured value and model estimated value, they are matching with each other. So, what is the conclusion? We say whenever the preload is a lesser, measured value and model estimation, there is a some sort of difference. Here also in this case, uh, somewhat difference, but at the peak values value. Coming to the, this side coefficient of friction also measured and model estimation, uh, there is a difference. Model is not able to estimate results appropriately, what we are getting as a experimental results. But at a higher preload and a relatively high speed, we are able to get a results appropriately that the model is able to estimate coefficient of friction appropriately. Now, why this is happening? Sometimes we say there is a phenomena because uh, coefficient of friction also uh, has a one component that is what we call a micro slip effect. Micro slip effect is working and that is in a within a contact area. What is the reason? Because of the irregular geometry or surface roughness. That means, if we account the surface roughness appropriately, we can account this kind of effect also. However, it is difficult to estimate, it is difficult to account. So, that is why often it is avoided and then we go for a slightly high RPM and high preload. So, that irregularities can be nullified and then we get a sufficient uh, elastohydronomic lubrication mechanism. Now, this uh, micro slip can be also uh, understood from uh, this uh, the, the figure, figure 1 we are able to see the rough rotor or rough rotating element, the smooth rotor but rough surface. So, if I am assuming this is a cam and this is a follower, here the follower surface is smoother which we also got earlier, RA value for uh, cam is slightly higher compared to the RA value of the uh, follower. While coming to second case, this is a hypothetical case, we say even the follower gets damaged or getting roughened, then again this kind of micro slip effect will come and then we need to see the coefficient of friction is slightly varying about this mean value. So, there will be a variation and which we need to keep in mind, it is not that we will not get that kind of variation. This is what we also realize in one of our case study, uh, maybe I have shown this cam, for, uh, cam in uh, lecture 1, we are able to see that pitted surface or maybe the damaged surface of the cam and then uh, we also have seen similar kind of behavior in the bricks. When the brick uh, is applied 
at a low rpm like in this case or maybe low speed here it is been shown under 0.03 mm per second you can see coefficient of friction is a fluctuating and at the coefficient of friction comes to the more or less mean value if the speed is increased from 0.03 to 0.05 and when it is exceeding 0.1 mm per second we are able to get a mean value maybe the more or less constant friction. So, this is a word we call as a stick slip phenomena which has been observed also in a brick and uh, reason or the has been mentioned here causes of a stick slip phenomena are damage to the rolling element, rolling element in this case the cam is a rolling element and that hinders a smooth movement along the axis causing a intermediate sticking and slipping. Another one is that many times because of the age uh, it is very difficult because of the surface roughness will be uh, slightly different because of the wear it will be very difficult to maintain at the low rpm that means uh, low rpm we will not be able to see the uh, consistent motion slightly in higher rpm we are able to get elastomeric I mean, lubrication effective manner at the low rpm we do not get that kind of uh, effect. So, that is why we will be getting lesser effect uh, uh, at uh, um, when we go for high rotational speed. So, lesser is stick, stick slip phenomena when uh, we go for a higher speed at the low speed we will be able to observe this kind of phenomena and these all are the related to friction, friction or we will say static friction and kinetic friction because there is a variation static coefficient of friction often is on the higher side compared to kinetic coefficient of friction and if the values are very high or difference is significant like a 0.3 to the 0.05 naturally stick slip phenomena will be much higher and then minimum rpm at which we can rotate the component needs to be on a higher side. If we are able to maintain the static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction almost same level then this kind of a phenomena will not occur. However, maybe when we are designing something new we are able to maintain but maybe because of the wear out or maybe because of the corrosion or maybe because of the some other phenomena some misalignment again a stick slip phenomena may occur or micro slip phenomena may occur which will increase the friction force or decrease the friction force. Now, this author uh, which I earlier mentioned the reference uh, they also use a GPR and then they found the GPR is giving better results particularly for coefficient of friction at the, of course at the low um, the, the preload and they are not able to get a very good results but at a high preload and high RPM they are able to match the results. So, they see the coefficient of friction particularly is uh, estimated properly when they are using the GPR compared to ANN. So, that is why we initially mentioned when we are learning the machine learning algorithm it is not only one algorithm is going to give all the good solution we need to try different and in this case they have a tried three algorithm one was SVM and of course SVM is giving forward the result compared to the other two or maybe say it is not as good result as a um, and the ANN and GPR and ANN they are using for friction force and uh, this uh, GPR is for the coefficient of friction. Now, what we have realized in a previous slide that uh, coefficient of friction and friction behavior they are showing some sort of dampening effect or reduction in the magnitude with the time and then this is what we call uh, under damped system that means damping is not sufficient often it has been represented in a periodic motion maybe say what they need to be given at a sine function and if we are able to model in a system this friction force here you can see the friction force the sliding speed is 0 there is some value f s and as the sliding speed increases, it it may turn out to be after that is a constant but in this duration this will show us a f s and f k will vary and how do we present how do we model it we say friction force function in terms of time can be given as f s minus lambda dx by dt dt dx dt is a kind of a traveling distance or a variation in traveling distance. So, this can be represented it can be given and often we say that whatever the damping coefficient or maybe say damping parameters of the system need to be much much bigger than lambda if the lambda it is much bigger than lambda then we may not get a this kind of behavior other variation in a coefficient of friction or variation in a friction force will be observed. Now, next question comes uh, how do we really uh, model this kind of system and uh, this is uh, what I mentioned on previous slide that these people have estimated 
on this uh, normal load how much normal load is being applied because of the cam follower mechanism here that's why they are using a supervised algorithm they already know what mechanisms are happening and how they are working that means cam follower mechanism equation have been utilized to estimate the normal force we can also measure there's no issue but they have utilized a mechanism uh, equation to find out the what will be the normal force and they are able to see at the low uh, preload normal force has been given by the kind of the blue color line at um, in the 412 preload they are giving a red color line and 612 uh, preload it is a green color line so this is very clear when we are increasing the preload to reduce a variation in the question of friction so the smoothing effect comes but that is increasing the load uh, that is increasing compressive load naturally that will increase the pressure also so what will be the justify shall i go with a low uh, preload shall i go with a high preload or shall i go with a medium uh, preload and that is what we call as optimization and this is what we require it so finally it's a win win situation we require some sort of preload to reduce a fluctuation in the friction but again because of the uh, higher load friction force will be on a higher side and that is what they have given a friction force in this form. You can see at the high preload uh, there is a friction force which is uh, given as a in this manner at the 212 they are getting this kind of friction force and maybe at the 412 they are getting a red color line in this case. So, this is a what they have, have estimated they have not uh, measured but this is indicated very clearly as the friction force and the preload increases friction force is also increasing. So, it is not that we want only the smoothening effect, but we also want control effect we want kind of the mean value should not continuously fluctuate otherwise there will be variation and then uh, particularly look at in this case a friction force is going on negative side. When friction force on goes on a negative side naturally this is parameter will be negative and that will bring instability and if there is instability in a system it will damage the system. So, it is not that only we need to think uh, about only one aspect we need to think multiple aspects to the run it in proper manner otherwise we will not be able to get optimum results. Now they compared the results uh, um, we say that uh, friction force and they have used a SCM model to model it GPR and AN you can see here uh, friction force uh, they are getting regression coefficient 0.9923 GPR they are getting 0.97 and SVM they are getting 0.96. In my view all G, uh, this uh, regression coefficient are fine because uh, if any times are more than 0.95 we should go hard we should not reject anything. Now coming to the coefficient of friction you can see here uh, in the friction coefficient SVM is giving R value as a 0.8246. Coming to the GPR, it gives a 0.96, and coming to the FCAN, and it gives a 0.95. So this is the reason why they are saying that the friction force is uh, giving better results when we are modeling with ANN, and uh, GPR gives a more better result when they are modeling GPR uh, with a uh, GPR. But this fluctuation is very minute, and we know very well these are the random number generation. If I run for three times, four times, I may get a very different values. So, believing just only ANN is giving better result for friction force or modifying is may not be correct, or we given the GPR is giving better result for equal to the R square 0.96 may not be correct. Anything which is giving more than 0.95, I will go ahead with that. I will not be really sticking to this one. Now, when coming to the MATLAB. And in previous lecture on the particular lecture 25th, we have seen that training time because the, we got around 25 data. Of course, we say very clearly when ANN has a lesser data, it will not be giving very good results. ANN is meant for the very high data or maybe number of data need to be much higher side. In um, MATLAB, they have a procedure loop convergence is based on the MSC value. And what we are looking at uh, particularly in this paper we are looking at the R value. So, that means when it is this is not incorporated R square value is not been incorporated in algorithm it is given as a only output value, but we are not considering for the convergence naturally results will not be as per the demand. So, here what we did earlier we found 0.8637 
as a uh, r square value for training and those trained values are the parameter when we were checked for the validation they got a result 0 0.6852 and then again for testing 0.154 that means this is a kind of overfitting and then uh, we need to replace or we need to go for the more and more cross validation and then when you are going for a MATLAB at least I do not know how to invoke it so that is why we really require a separate algorithm. So that is why I am going to describe in the present lecture how to write that algorithm and get uh, both the values MSC and as well as R because uh, uh, on the MSC 10 is to minus 5 does not make much sense to me it can be 0 0.001 also is ok why it will need to be go 0 uh, 10 is to minus 5. But R square because we are talking about the regression, regression coefficient is a very important for us to understand and that has been also given in this paper and that which has been published in 2023 that we need to believe in R square also. MSC criteria as well as R square criteria both need to be accounted. So, what we can say yeah a regression value of the model need to be examined and we need to account in our algorithm if we do not keep into the, our convergence criteria naturally it will give very arbitrary values may not be correct. So, what we really require we need to revisit the and incorporate the uh, convergence criteria on R square. Another one is that if I want to compare if I want to compare the data because our aim also is that we need to extract the data from a literature, we need to learn from a literature. It is not only method but we need to learn through data and we want to learn through data and the most of the data are given in kind of the figures or uh, graphs, we need to digitize it. I already covered a digitization manual form in my earlier lecture, but in the present lecture I am trying to uh, teach you how to extract that those digits directly from MATLAB by writing a code that will be much easier and it will give much better results also. So, what we say to incorporate R square uh, in convergence criteria into ANN we need to write our own algorithm that is the first thing. <coughs> algorithm must create a function containing the weight factor and bias vectors to set up a link between input and output because in MATLAB we can export whatever the model or uh, which in the ANN model is giving very good result we can export so that future we are able to utilize. So, in the present lecture I am going to write so give a, a one sort of algorithm we will be giving export or we will be exporting those parameters. Parameters means uh, this weighting factor and bias factor. So, next time when you have a new data new input you can directly guess or you can directly estimate the what will be the output you do not have to do experiments on that. So, that is what we are going to learn in this. So, say to guess what the output will be for the new input factor this is what is our aim to understand and then explain and uh, we say that uh, if we have all this value we can be able to understand friction and wear in much more comprehensive manner it will be much better. In future uh, we will be covering a lecture on the lubricant and coating materials. So, that will also be helpful so whatever we are learning and we will progress towards uh, uh, the improving lubricant selection, improving coating material selection or even we have will be having dealing with the predictive modeling of the or we say the predictive maintenance that will give a more information and so this kind of algorithm building will help us. I am, I am saying even though we have a number of algorithm in a MATLAB, but unless we know each and every parameter properly doing a trial error only with a MATLAB may not give a very good results to us. So, better we also learn how to develop those algorithm so that we get a reliable results. So, first thing is that how to digitize in this case particularly we took example of the surface roughness. Now, this surface roughness comes from a directly a stylus profilometer. I can take a 3D profilometer we can directly go for the regeneration of 3D surface also that is possible. While here we are just explaining with a 2D in this case a 4.75 mm length was given to us from a stylus and then uh, what we did uh, uh, earlier that uh, you use uh, some sort of digitizer which is available uh, online you import this image and then extract the data you need to say what is the minimum value of x uh, uh, with a 0 and then maximum value x and in this case we are given 4.7 in uh, y axis also we are giving minimum value minus 2 micron maximum value 2 micron so that we get appropriate results. After that wherever you uh, click 
that will give the coordinate of x and y and then we need to write algorithm to uh, make it uh, in a in the micro level and uh, mm level. So, that is why we say x minimum, x maximum, uh, y minimum, y maximum and we need to write algorithm. So, the interpolation results are given to us. This is what we call, call a manually extracting coordinates and finding the roughness parameters which gives the results. It is not the results are not there but not a very high accurate results which we wanted when we wanted to compare with the literature, we want to learn from a literature. So, here we are just laying a whatever the cuff is available in a literature, we can extract the more information, we learn from those and so that we need to conduct lesser number of experiments because we have a uh, extensive data available in literature as I mentioned the tribology, a number of researchers have worked for the 60 years. And then if we do not go through those literature and extract the information and connect with those, we will not be able to learn much faster. However, if we have a, all the database with us either in graph form or some other form and we are able to convert to the digit form which is daily required for machine learning, then it will be very useful for the, our purpose. So, when we do uh, this kind of digitization. MATLAB has a one algorithm to import image. So, we can import the image and after importing the image we can do post processing. In this case what we are showing something like image may be a kind of analog image is being given and mostly uh, it will be creating some sort of a digital sampling and it some sort of a pixel quantification. What is the meaning of that? We say in color image uh, pixel values will vary from a uh, um, 0 to 20, uh, 255. So, there are every colored image is given in a three uh, colors one is a red, green and blue color and then whatever the shade which has been decided by RGB, RGB channel that shade will come the blue color channel or maybe green color. So, naturally there will be some value for red and this one and some for the green some for the blue color also. And this is what we call the channels RGB channels. So, this is value will be given and finally, the merger of R, those RGB value determine exact color of, of that pixel whatever the pixel which uh, been coming from a uh, image in this case. And sometimes we say that this pixel values will decide what will be the height or the depth that means, I can figure out the surface softness directly from this. Sometimes we use a gray label also because a uh, gray label is uh, storage is much easier and then uh, we use only black and white. In this case white means 255, black means 0 so that means we can vary from 0 to 255. Um, we are just mentioning about the 8 bit, uh, 8 bit image, it can be 12 bit, can be 16 bit, can be more, maybe 64 bit also. So, what we are saying in this situation we can utilize a gray scale also. We can use a uh, colored or we can use a gray scale, but we need to interpret the results so that we can um, uh, find out the appropriate. Initially, it looks very difficult what I am talking is it really possible. So, that is why I have taken this as example and that is why you say that whatever the process stylus profilometer we got the results, we um, made from a 0 to 47 4.75 and the, this is what we say that is why we use a crop in the cropping of that image. So, that image can be read by the MATLAB and the once it is read in a MATLAB, we convert the image to the binary image. And then we say here we are able to see the green color. If you look at here, we are able to see the green color, that means all other colors can be rejected. That means if I make a filter which allows only green color to pass, I can get a this image. And then once the image comes, I can convert into a binary, that means a black and white kind of thing. So that overall results are a much better manner, and I am able to interpret the results proper manner. Let me say again here we are able to see there is a green color which is of more use to us. White color no use, black color no use to me. That means, if I want to see the surface profile or maybe say this variation in a surface, if I am able to extract the signal from a green image or green uh, color, that is more than sufficient. And exactly this is what we are trying to aim. We are trying to make a one green filter which will allow uh, to filter the green color pixels, other pixel will not be the filter out. And once that is done, after that we can convert to the binary image and then we can really do a, some sort of post processing to get a good results. And that is what we hear now this, uh, the, the, this image has been plotted with a red color. Uh, I can plot with the blue color, I can plot with the green color, does not matter. But here just to compare with uh, this, you can see that each feature is same. 
is not varying significantly. That means, MATLAB has a good feature of importing image, uh, doing a post processing and giving the finally right values to us. And all these values are now available in digital form. It can be 1000 data, it can be 10,000 data, depends on the resolution which we want. That is what has been given here and we are able to extract this kind of a features just to see whatever I, we are extracting are they really meaningful or maybe committing some mistake. Maybe from picture it appears yeah, everything is good, but we really require a quantified results. So, that is why we tried to do that, we tried, uh, we wrote a MATLAB program for this purpose. And we see here uh, MATLAB says that uh, I have uh, um, the, the saved this image, uh, original image as a 50 uh, hyphen 22 and then I have defined the image path from where it has been uh, to be extracted. We have given the lower bound for the green color to be extracted, upper bound also for green color to be extracted. As I say, we want only green color. So, this is, is it signifies from uh, 0, uh, the red, first one is a red, second is a green, third one is a blue color. And then what we are saying in for the red, we are allowing a range from 0 to 80. Of course, it depends how do we extract because unless we get a similar image we need to fiddle with that. We do not uh, know exactly what relation and how do we get it, but here to extract the similar image we need to really keep changing. That is why we say define the lower and upper limit uh, bounds for the green color and you need to adjust value. So, whatever image you are importing and, and maybe have a slightly uh, light color, slightly dark color, this value will change. But if you are getting same image, it makes sense. So, here we are seeing the lower bond for the red is 0, upper bond for the red is 80, lower bond, uh, bond for the green is 100, upper bond for the green will be 255 and uh, coming to the blue color, lower bond for the blue color is 0 and upper bond is 80. Once that is done, we make a green mask and green mask because it has RGB uh, to say every time yeah if please extract whatever the pixel if it is a more than the lower green or uh, if it is a reject if anything is a more than upper green. Same thing for the red same thing for the this uh, three all because we are giving as a kind of uh, array and we need to utilize this purpose. Now, here the green mask has been utilized for the image so that we are able to get a, a right uh, function that is why we say we need to apply this kind of green mask on the image which we are utilizing. And then uh, once it is done, then we can convert this image to for the processing into the gray color and uh, because we are when we are processing we are getting inverted image. You may get a right image, uh, but when I did it in this case, we are getting inverted image. So, that is why I use a 1 minus that image. So, that wherever a 1 it becomes 0, wherever 0 it becomes a 1. And then if you look at here, this is the binary image we are getting, which uh, resembles what we are giving initially. And this is a what the same thing has been uh, in this case particularly, we are giving similar kind of things over here. Now, whether uh, the values which you are getting are correct or not that has been checked utilizing the RA value. Uh, what we got uh, from uh, stylus RA value is a 0.18 to 1 micron, uh, RQ value 0.2981, uh, uh, SQNS 0.86 and uh, Kurtos is a 9.99. Of course, I am using the word we, we are not checking the whether they have followed standards or not. That means, whatever the, the, the 4.75 mm which we use, we can also rectify it. We can really check, check whether it is really following the ISO standards or not. We can correct it. However, for present case, we are just looking at the only image, whatever the SLS uh, gives uh, values to us, are we able to approach to that or not. Now, this is what we I showed in previous program, a previous slide. Uh, that these are the lower green uh, and upper green and from that we are getting this kind of RA values so 0.188, 0 0.2969, 1 10.4606. Now, if I find that these are values are can be improved. So, what I did I little change a little bit uh, bond values. So, earlier I was keeping 0 and uh, this is 80 while here I have reduced to 50. Here we were keeping 100 to 255, here I re uh, in the reduced 10 and the 255 same. Coming to the last so blue one uh, 0 80, here I am writing 0 50 and if I find the value has improved. So, instead of 0 0.18, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969, 0 0.2969
86 I am getting 0 0.1847 which is slightly more closer to the this uh, measured value. Now this second value 0 0.2937 micron which is again uh, more closer to uh, this value. However, this is insignificant, it is not a significant variation, particularly RA value and RQ value. Coming to the uh, skewness, you can see the variation here at value is a 1.2919 uh, uh, compared to 0.86 which is again better than 1.5166. Coming to the kurtosis, 10.13 compared to the word match they have given 9.9986. Now, we are getting better compared to the word we got an earlier filter. So, this is the way we compare, we can Im improve and then after this we have all the digit data and we can really uh, even estimate future what will be the wear. Reason being when the two surfaces come in a contact, asperities will be into contact and then there will be wear and tear of the asperities. Maybe some uh, asperities will elastically deform, some plastically deform, some will fracture. So, elastically deform will be in the regain the shape. But once a plastically deformed, it will not regain the shape. Once it is cracked, when it is refractured, it will not get come back to this. Naturally, surface roughness is going to vary. And that is why this kind of modeling is very important. Whatever surface roughness in the 2D or 3D we are getting, we should convert to the MATLAB code and then figure out what is the surface roughness. That means, in future when we two surfaces are coming into contact and we want to do a wear modeling, we can account this. However, it is a little more difficult. So, that is why I am giving only the initial points how to go ahead with the better modeling. Now, coming back to the, the, the this paper which we started at the beginning of lecture, we say now we want to really see uh, whether we are able to model this uh, or maybe say digitize this data or not. If you look at the diagram, they have given normal force which they could calculate using a theoretical formula. We can get directly also, there is no issue. But question comes, are we able to extract this data and are we be able to get a right values that way. So, for that purpose, you look at now, initially I use only red channel. You can see the red color values is coming somewhere here and we are getting something same, almost 1100. We have one peak, we have second peak, that peak is also coming over here. And you can see the behavior over here in this situation, behavior is also more or less same. That means, when we are passing this image from a red filter, we say we want only the red color, we do not want the green color, we do not want the blue color, we are able to estimate the proper results, we are able to extract it. Now, I do not have to digitize in 250 uh, points, here I have all x y coordinates, I have many many data and that can be utilized for the ANN purpose or as I say earlier the ANN is we require many many data, so we can do that kind of thing. Now, this is was the red color. Now, I believe that we need to try more. Naturally, we next one is a green color. We look at the green color. What we are getting is here max value 1100. Here we are getting 1300 to 1400, and that's what exactly has been given here. You can see the peak and the red peak is on higher side, but green peak is lesser side. And same behavior we are able to see here also. And this is one. Now you can see here first peak is on the higher side that is why we are getting over here slightly on higher side, but here the green color peak is on lower side we are getting this one. So, again this is a right behavior we are able to extract this information directly from image which has been published and we do not really uh, want to write to the author to give, give me data because that will be very difficult to writing to so many authors. We can extract information, we can give uh, their references yeah, they have done because we are trying to extract the information, we are trying to learn the knowledge, we are not really stealing anything, we are just learning so that more and more models can be created and then we can go for the better and better surface generation, better and better tribology, better better knowledge. We face only one problem in the blue color, reason being this printed color is not exactly blue color, it is something different. However, if you look at the max value, we are getting right value over here, behavior we are getting also right over here. The only the problem comes only this one, these are the some peaks. Now, this is indicating that wherever the color which are superimposing each other, that time we are getting some problem and blue color is below the green color and the red color and there is a exactly matching with the green color and red color. That is why we are not able to get a very crisp behavior that is what of my I am trying to understand. Yeah, we can get a 95 percent information, but maybe the 5 percent information we need to look at the data and then do some sort of correction in images. 
So, this is also required but this gives a lot of extraction or a lot of information to us how to actually uh, come up with the right data. So, this is what uh, uh, I did and this is what we are showing here uh, in the algorithm uh, we given in this case x minimum as a 0, x max as a 360, y minimum here because we are in the MATLAB we get a inward image. Here the image start from the top and goes in the opposite side. So, this is a kind of 0, 0 for the MATLAB and this goes a maximum maybe it is a 0, my y max something like that. So, this is why we have a given inverted you can see here y minimum is a 3, 1380 y max is 0 and then uh, for the green color I use a this filter, red color this I use this filter, blue color I use this filter as I mentioned again the blue color which is printed or been published is not exactly blue color but is a somewhat variation may be quite possible when you try and you mo modify this you may get a better result compared to that. My job was to only demonstrate how to really learn and then get a good results from that and once it is done you can see here we have all x y coordinates we can scale we scale down based on the whatever the information we have because we have it will be a, if I do not normalize it so this is a kind of the normalization method we are with the giving uh, in terms of x min and x maximum which are available to us that gives a good results overall and that is a beneficial to us. Now, we are trying to revisit the neural network we also learn the neural network in previous lecture we say we can call ANN and then sometime in some books they are using the word a simulated neural network and of course the last lecture also we emphasize on the deep neural network we say that the more than one layer can be called a deep neural network, but now in these days people are saying that oh five layers are also the shallow layer. They think that more than 10 layer, 50 layer, 100 layer only the deep neural network, but again in tribology we may not require so many layers unless we are going for classification like a wear classification there we may require many layers because there are many shapes, many particles, many sizes that time we really require. Then again we learn also neural network that there are neuron and neuron is known as a processing element because uh, all the weighting factors are connected to the neuron, all bias vectors are connected to the neuron and then uh, even the activation function is also related to neuron. So, each neuron has a three element and that is why we call as a processing element. If I want to just summarize in a proper way, we say that is a neural network uh, consists of the many nodes which are interconnected with the weight and the threshold is something like a bias. Coming to the node operation, inputs are uh, weighted, summed up and passed through the activation function to find out what will be the activation of the node. And then uh, we, we uh, go ahead with the feed forward network because MATLAB utilizes a feed backward network. You write on the feed, uh, feed forward network with uh, some numbers, it generates many things. So, it is useful. Now, coming to the mathematical basis, we can use a sigmoid because we want to really do a normalization. Normalization can be done minus 1 to 1 or it can be 0 to 1 or some other method which can be used uh, utilized for the normalization. Here the sigmoid they utilize it and it gives a value from 0 to 1, but is again in continuous manner it is not either 0 or 1 which uh, generally uh, is done in the classification. And uh, they, they we use this as a basically supervised algorithms the reason we, we want to utilize our existing knowledge which is available and we are able to get a, some sort of better uh, understanding and we are able to train model much faster manner. And another one uh, as a MATLAB uh, uh, utilize uh, MSC as uh, one of the criteria or uh, the cost function to minimize it, but in my view particularly when we are going for regression analysis we need to and do a cost function of R square also, so that we are we, we can uh, approach to one value. It will not be minimized, it can be maximized, but again it should not go very high value. So, we need to constrain in and then there are good algorithm, there are good mathematical formulation can be utilized in that manner. Our overall aim is that to minimize errors so that we get a repeatable result we are able to estimate the right model. So, that is why we are saying that the two crucial steps are the training and learning from that and then uh, during the training we learn and then validation phase accuracy improves and one more thing comes the testing which will uh, give the better results overall. Now, in next slide I will be explaining all those terms. We say neural network behavior is influenced by the transfer function as I say that. Uh, even the MATLAB gives a full activation function, full transfer function. 
you you need to know which transfer function is going to really give good results is the linear or maybe you do not require any linear function or you required a sigmoid or you required that and hyperbolic what is really required and then whatever the results we are able to uh, get proper way we should learn utilize that so we need to learn with from neuron um, utilizing the learning rules and an oral architecture with the four uh, um, and the neurons are required or five neurons are required 10 neurons are required Sometimes people say that if you increase the number of neurons, that gives a faster convergence. But sometimes it gives a very uh, odd results also. So that's what uh, we we do not have a very clear method. And wherever we go for the trained algorithm, those results are good. But initially, we need to really learn about the system in appropriate manner. Then only this kind of good results will be coming. Otherwise, it will not be coming. As I say, one of the major disadvantage of uh, ANN is that it requires a larger data to train the network. If you don't have very good number of data, training will be difficult. Even if it is a train, R square value is good, but it may fail in validation. Again, it may fail in a testing phase. So that is what uh, ANN really requires more number of data to process appropriately. And, of uh, and then moreover, uh, once it is a all are trained, we can estimate the values. If we have a function which is a, as I say that a MATLAB also you can export the function and what I have written a code also you can export the function. Once you export the function you can utilize any optimization method. It is not only the machine learning because we optimization has been taught in a various uh, level at a much deeper level. We can use many many optimization algorithms and then get a better results. And you, if we are able to do that we can will be able to explore and uh, forecast a friction and wear under different lubrication condition is a boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication, elastoid lubrication, hydronomy lubrication that is what is our aim of the tribology. We learn uh, from a literature, we improve the performance by optimizing and in future if we are getting more and more data, so those data also getting involved and then we improve the performance with uh, those data also. I covered uh, this uh, slide in previous lecture as I mentioned that uh, this slide has a some sort of uh, uh, information as a neural network will give a good results if the parameters are independent. What is the meaning of that? When input parameter A, B, C, D if they are all independent N and will converge faster. If they are dependent then convergence will be slightly difficult and we also realize the sliding speed and sliding distance they are related to each other. Another one which we realize also that uh, specific wear rate which has been given itself has an equation. There means only the mass was measured. So, in, instead of uh, going for a specific wear rate, if uh, author would have written here directly mass, it will give the better results. Reason being the density also does not remain constant. As we are adding more and more filler, like a 0 percent filler uh, will give one kind of density, 8 percent uh, filler containing uh, in composite will give another kind of density, 16 percent filler will give another kind of density, 24 percent another kind of density, 32 percent naturally. So, these densities will vary. That means, this uh, row is not a constant, but it has been utilized that means it will give improper results. So, that is why we say instead of a specific wear rate, if we directly use here that what is a mass loss that will give better results. Here I am not using the word volume because the density I do not want to bring, reason being all the labels the density is changing, any parameter which is continuously changing and is not accounted properly, it will not give a very good result. So, that is why we say that in this situation we need to change. Of course, we also mentioned about the time uh, because these two are the dis uh, related sliding distance and uh, sliding velocity they are related to each other. But if I uh, want to improve I say because uh, this was giving only 2.5 percent variation. So, I can cut the sliding distance and I can make to the time from frame because we know the relation between sliding distance time and the velocity. So, but we realize that it is going to create a many many levels. So, instead of the, uh, doing for a 5 level operation we are going to go ahead with the 19 level and we may not get a good results as such. When we are studying the literature we, it is a very uh, always a preferable to learn from literature and what we find uh, improving uh, in our way how do we experiments can be improved that will be preferable. So, in this case I believe that uh, uh, time if it is uh, done uh, some sort of a label it makes much more sense compared to going for the arbitrary time scale. 
Now coming to the validation and testing, here what we are saying here the training and validating that means uh, validation we, uh, once it is done, done a training then we are going for validation and then we are going for the testing and then here we are differentiating in the manner we say it is tested particularly on a set which I was never encountered and here it is an enclosed case we do a training and validating on that. So often we use 85 percent overall maybe say 70 percent training and 15 percent validation and then there the we need to bring a loop of R square and MSC. In testing phase that loop will not come that has to show direct results. If results are very good then I will be getting a good R square value for tested also. If I am not getting good result the way I showed in one of the previous slide I am getting 0.15 R square value that means is a kind of overfit and I am not getting good results and we need to revisit or we need to retry also. So, this is a what we say in um, the, there are different terminologies different book we say training then validation then testing particularly we are when we are trying to incorporate R square and MSC. So, we are still utilizing the both the values and then uh, we can go ahead with some ratio, but we are saying the both the values should be accounted. Now, when we do it naturally convergence will be one of the major issue. The way in MATLAB we are getting in 5 epochs or 10 epochs or 15 epochs uh, immediately results, but here you may require 10,000 epochs because there are 2 parameters not a 1 parameter and the 2 parameters simultaneously they get solved. Of course, more efficient algorithm can be developed, but for this is initial purpose I am just saying the R square value need to be accounted if you are not accounting we are not uh, giving justification to the regression. So, what we have done we say total data and then uh, training and validation 85 percent training is 70 percent validation 15 percent and we are checking the performance again the two parameter MSC. Now, it can be also lesser but it will take little more time and then R square 0.95 it can be 0 0.90 as per my understanding literature say R square more than 0.9 is sufficient. However, in our algorithm we again more than 0.95 if it is not getting convergence it is exceeding 10,000 epochs and we are directly getting results and we are publishing as it is. Now, here if these are convergence are not quite satisfied it goes back and change the weighting factor and bias factors. So, this is the what has been done however, if it satisfy then goes for the testing here though we are not changing uh, bias factor or uh, we are not uh, updating it. So, sometime we will can say uh, this can be uh, of course, there are different different possibilities we can develop this different different algorithm. Some people say no instead of a 70 and 15 percent separately why not account directly 85 percent it's up to uh, the individual who is developing algorithm. Sometime we say now first let us check here then 15 percent and then find in uh, tuning initially course tuning and then fine tuning and that is the way uh, algorithm can be derived. Coming to the testing here as I say that here finally we come up with MSC and R square. So, this is uh, what once it has been done we will be getting some sort of weight we will be getting some sort of bias and then uh, we can uh, keep this in a with some file. So, that uh, in future because this has already been uh, trained validated and tested. So, in this needs to be stored so that we can uh, really utilize a finally one function and in input uh, I can give as a variable as a different. So, in the previous uh, in case uh, I trained one to 25 and after that suppose I am I have now 26 number data 27 number data 28 number data. I can directly utilize um, those I do not have to again go through each and everything and I can directly find out uh, what will be the uh, value final value. That means, here if I have a uh, trained uh, model I can generate many many values then I can go with more innovation I can see oh I have done some values 1 to 25 maybe I want to vary uh, percentage uh, of the filler. I want to increase the speed, I want to reduce the speed, I can generate a more number of data, I can think about more data and what will be the value of uh, y and if we that value has been given and that is a really impressive to the management we can perform experiment. So, overall it will reduce the experimental cost here. So, we have some data we can get directly from literature, we can perform all everything in and on uh, the literature and come up with uh, some good results 
and then we want to only validate those things that is also possible. So that is why we say we can do all those learn from a literature forecast of friction and wear and then different lubrication condition and once we are able to forecast then we can also perform experiments. So instead of going for the 100 experiment I can get a very good innovative results in 10 experiments also. So that is possible utilizing this kind of approach. So I am just, just trying to show the results here you can see when we are going for the 70 percent data we are getting R square value as a 1 and of course uh, in the MSC value is very good in this situation and when we are going for the, in the validation we are able to see a 0.97 as R square value and then uh, MSC value is also reasonable. Coming to the final uh, testing case we here our, uh, this uh, MSC value is a 0.08 we want we can read run or if you find now this is also fine we uh, it has converged and then we are getting all the values together finally and overall all the value together MSC comes out to be 0 0.01 and then uh, R square value is a 0.988. So this is also very useful uh, I am just trying to give all the hints to you now it is up to you how to utilize this kind of algorithm for better results and here I have written complete algorithm uh, again. Here what we are saying we are exporting the way in MATLAB we export the complete uh, algorithm in a sum library. So, we are exporting all the data uh, in a library uh, in, in a files and then so that I can reread the data also whenever it is really required. So, what we are saying that uh, once the, the, the done the next time we want to really give only input which is a different which is coming from our mind some input which are not there but we want to play with that we want to innovate. So, those values can be utilized and that will give you the what will be the predicted y value. So, this can be completely written in a one file we can run the file and get a good results in that situation. So, this is overall algorithm uh, again uh, only as I say the regression using ANN model without rerunning, retraining, revalidating. Here everything is already been revalidated. We are uh, have giving some sort of uh, data to the uh, algorithm say these are the input what will be the output. However, just wanted to confirm whatever we have done is a correct or not to find out uh, regression overall uh, is correct or not am I getting same thing that is why I have used uh, in this algorithm to get uh, all the values again R square values and uh, otherwise we do not really require in this case. Now my well, last uh, maybe one or two slide of this lecture I just wanted to rush through the this uh, uh, Gaussian process uh, regression. Uh, we have realized that many times GPR gives a very good result and that I will on the file which I was referring or the paper which I was referring they have mentioned that GPR gives a good result for coefficient of friction. Some reason have been also given reason being that the GPR is already based on the Gaussian distribution it pertains to the normal the, the random variables and then uh, it is also uh, giving robust results because uh, we know the environment may affect the results contamination affect the results and then there are al always some sort of uncertainties and uh, whenever this kind of uncertainties remain in experiment we use a normal distribution to minimize that we get a more values uh, values or mean value and standard deviation and that is why we give error bar in the graphs also and somewhat the GPR is uh, accustomed to that. So, if we use those algorithm with a machine learning that will give a better result that is what has been uh, indicated. So, that is why we are saying Gaussian process supervised learning primarily implied for addressing the regression challenges which are uh, there are some sort of inherent uh, some sort of uh, problems in a data point and uh, we need to use a special kernels for that. Even suppose there is a non-linear TV can utilize a different kernels. We will be learning in a future lectures about those, but here the we are bringing some sort of probability production that is also important because this is the Gaussian forms and then we have already learned about the standard deviation mean values and then what is the meaning of the fitting uh, those can be done properly. However, one major limitation which I have learned about the GPR is the dimension. When the number of variables are increasing I think in many times the variables are more than 10 uh, GPR is not giving very satisfactory results. But if you have more number of data ANN gives a good results. So, here now the problem comes we do not have many variables. So, GPR also may give a good results to us. So, we will be learning little bit more about this.
uh, about uh, this method and utilizing this method for our purpose. However, uh, if you uh, remember in a previous uh, lecture, uh, where the, as mentioned the 1 to 25 data which were given, it had a, some sort of correlation and then uh, that is why the ANN was not giving good results. However, the GPR was giving a good results and the GPR says that even though parameters are inter interconnected, they have some relation, I will be able to give a good results and that is why I was given that time, this is I am just repeating the previous uh, lecture slide and then uh, now we wanted to really see whether GPR does this kind of thing or not. So, that is why I have given uh, some data here the sliding distance and the sliding with an increase in the sliding distance what we are trying to see the coefficient of friction and friction force. You can see here in this case if I plot you can see here that plot in this manner that the friction force in the Newton uh, and this is a real behavior of the friction force. This is the real behavior of the coefficient of friction. Can GPR provide a good result? We will be able to get it properly. Unfortunately, without our own algorithm when we are utilizing the MATLAB and then uh, it is not giving that kind of results. So, here when I use a 10 percent test data, I get a good again MSC, but uh, R square value is very uh, different which is not expected. Coming to the 20 percent data where the observation, the 3 observation have been picked up, again uh, I am getting MSC more reasonably good value, but R square values are not very good as such. So, again we need to rewrite a uh, algorithm when we want to the incorporate R square value and as I mentioned for the classification it may not be required, but when you go for regression it is really required. So, how do we really represent uh, this kind of uh, fluctuation in a coefficient of friction, fluctuation variation in a friction force, similarly variation in a wear rate, which kind of algorithm will be more useful, we will be learning in our next lecture. Thank you for attention. Thank you.